This is going to be on the methods of cross-sections and shells. Most of these examples are in my volume one of my calculus book with World Scientific. Okay, so I'm going to begin with the method of cross-sections. <clears throat> in this case, you have a, you know, a line, and you have a solid here, and you're looking at planes that are perpendicular to this line that slice this solid, okay? So this here would be one of the slices, and this would be a slice just a little further up. And the volume of the material between these two slices is approximately h times a of y, where a at y is the area of the slice at height y. And so if you look at V of Y minus H, which is the volume up to this slice minus the volume up to Y, the slice at, at height Y, divided by H, it's approximately this. And the approximation would be getting much better as you, looked, as you let H get smaller. And so um, <clears throat> when we take a limit, as H goes to zero, we should expect to get A of Y. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, that means from the method for finding the integral that this is the way we can compute the volume of the three-dimensional solid. We just have to integrate the cross-sections from A up to B, where here you see the solid occupies, uh, corresponds to Y equal to A up to Y equal to B, okay? So I'll look at some examples here. If you have the parabola y equal 4 minus x squared, then you see this is a side view. And corresponding to y here, there would be this, um, this slice here. And I'd like its area. Well, the distance from here to here would be the radius of that uh, circle. Okay, and what I can do is I can solve for that. Uh, it's the square root of 4 minus y, because you see if you have y is equal to this, you can solve for x and find that it's this. And so the area of this slice at height y above the uh, uh, y up from the bottom uh, would just be pi times 4 minus y. So all I have to do is do this integral, and I can do that easily because I can find an antiderivative and plug in the endpoints and subtract. Here's a pyramid. It sits on a square base of length 500 feet, and the pyramid has height 300 feet. Now here's a side view. Okay, From similar triangles, the length of one of the sides, L of Y here, would be satisfying this equal to 5 thirds. Okay, where you see this is 3, and this would be 5, well, 500 and 300, but the hundreds cancel. And so they should occur in this proportion. So L of Y should be 5 thirds times 300 Y. So the area of the slice at height Y would be this thing squared, see? And so what I would need to do would be to integrate from 0 to 300 this thing squared. And uh, that gives me the answer. OK, here's a little more interesting example that will include the example that I just did as a very special case. You have a solid that uh, sits above a plane. And the base of this solid will denote as S. Its area is A. <clears throat> and there's some point P above S that is at height H. And the solid is obtained by drawing all straight lines from the point P down to points in S. Now this is called a cone. Okay. So here's roughly the picture. You have the, the um, base of the solid here is S. And then corresponding to this little square, this would be 
one of the sides of that square and you have lines that go from that up to this point P. So you could imagine this being sitting on top of that and the point P is up here somewhere. Okay. So by similar triangles I can say that H minus Y, see Y is the height above the, the height up from the bottom um, and H minus Y would be from here down to here. So I should have by similar triangles H minus Y over H is equal to L of Y which is the length here divided by L where L is the length of one of the sides of this little square in S. Okay, so what I could do then is say that um, the area of the square at height Y would be L of Y squared, which is this, see. Now, you would have such a thing happening for every such square that lies in a plane and drawing lines from the square up to this single point P. Uh, you, could, you could say such a thing. And therefore, what you could do is you could approximate this um, region in the plane, this S here, with little squares that sort of fill it up and maybe overlap it a little bit, but there isn't much overlap because you make the squares small enough. And so what you could argue from this, from geometrical reasoning, is that if you were to look at the shape S that results from uh, this process of forming the cone at height Y, that should have area A of Y equal to this here. See, just like here. The L squared is the area of the little square here, and you'd have the area of the whole base here, times H minus Y over H all squared. So that would be the area of the cross section. Then you could just integrate that, and you get one third AH. So you see, this is a general sort of a procedure, and it allows you to find the volume of an arbitrary cone. Now here's another example. The base of a solid is a circle of radius 10 meters. Cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are rectangles with height equal to one half the length of the side. All right, so here you're going to have one of your rectangles and this will be the length and then the height would be like coming out from the uh, screen toward you. So a picture would be here. So this is a slice here. This is one of those little rectangles you see. So what I need to do is I need to figure out how long this is and then divide it by 2 and multiply those two numbers together and integrate it from negative 10 up to 10 because the, the radius is uh, 10 meters. Okay, so what do I do? Well, this length from here to here is 2 times the square root of 100 minus x squared because you see if I have an x here, the distance from here to here is the square root of 100 minus x squared. So twice that would be here. Okay? And so what I would need is I need to take this thing times half of this thing, which is just going to be 2 times 100 minus x squared. And so now all I have to do is take the integral of this, and an antiderivative is here, so then I plug in the endpoint, subtract, and I get 8,000 over 3. Okay, now we'll find the volume of a ball of radius r obtained by revolving a disk. All right, well, what we can do here is look at the at a cross section, see, at height y. And uh, the radius at height y would be the square root of r squared minus y squared. And uh, so the area of this cross section would be pi times this thing squared. And then I would just need to integrate that, and that gives me 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Now here's, a, here's another one. I'm going to revolve the region between y equal to square root of x and y equal x squared. Now they intersect here at the point 1, 1. And so this is a picture of that region. Now when I revolve this around the x-axis, what I'll get from revolving this line is a disk that has a hole punched out of it, just like it's shown in this picture. And I know the uh, area of that uh, disk, it's pi times 
the square root of x squared minus pi times x squared squared. So that would, this here would be the area of the cross section corresponding to an x here. And so I just have to integrate this. Well, that's not hard. Just find antiderivatives and you get 3 tenths pi. Now you see this is not a hard problem, but it's only a reasonably easy problem because you have the methods of calculus to do it. If you didn't have these methods, I don't know how you'd find such things as this. All right, now there's another method for finding volumes that's uh, significantly different. That's the method of shells. All right, so here, what is a shell? A cylindrical shell is the material between two cylinders, see? So it's, it's this material here. Now, when you take a shell, you can approximate its volume. All right, so if you were to look at the exact volume of that shell, it would be this minus that. All right, and when you multiply this thing out, you get this. Okay, now here's an example. Uh, we're going to have the material in the, this, this here, and we're going to be revolving it around this line here. Now when we do that, this, this rectangular thing, it's sort of slanty on the uh, sides, isn't it? But roughly a rectangle. It gets revolved around this line, and it, it produces this um, cylindrical shell that I've got shaded in red. And here it is continued down below it. Okay, now more generally, if I consider the problem of revolving the region between y equal to f of x and g of x about the line x equal to c, like here, the following picture is then descriptive of the situation. So I'll be revolving this, this thing around this line, see? And I'd be summing up the volumes of all of those circular shells to find the total volume of the, of the solid that results from revolving this material around this axis. Okay, so uh, if I take a look at this, I have the uh, time rate of the derivative of v with respect to x, where I'm looking at v of x being the volume from here up to, well, actually from here up to here, okay? So I'd get this, and um, that would be the height of the shell times the distance to the axis times the thickness of the shell, which is h, times 2 pi, and then I have this other material that really doesn't amount to much because in the limit it disappears. Since I have an h squared here, it's divided by h, that converges to 0. And so I should have that v prime of x would be 2 pi times this times this. Now, why did I put absolute value here? Well, I put absolute value here so that I can state the problem generally and not have to worry about which one of these functions is on the top and which one is on the bottom. But in practice, you've got to figure that out to do the problem. Okay, so this is v prime of x is equal to this. Now, I would have v of a equal to 0 because I'm only interested in that the solid that lies between a and b. I don't, there's nothing over here, you see. So I'm not, I don't want to add up any shells that correspond to material over here. All right, so I have this initial value problem, and therefore I, I can find the uh, volume of that solid of revolution by doing this integral. Now here's an example. I want the volume between the region between, I'm revolving this region between y equals sine of x and the x-axis for x between 0 and pi, and I'm revolving it around the y-axis, which just sticks up like that. And this is the picture of what you'd have in three dimensions, or what it would look like. All right, so in this example, c is equal to 0. And so I would take the distance to the y-axis, which is x. And I would take that times the height of the shell, which is sine of x times 2 pi. That would be the dv by dx. And so this is the thing I would need to integrate from 0 to pi 
And if I do that, I get 2 pi squared. Now, it's not hard, but you have to use integration by parts, you see. Here's another example. Region between y equal log of x and the x-axis, which lies between x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. Well, and I'm going to revolve around x equal to 1 fourth, which is a vertical line that goes like this, see? And so, the distance to the line about which I'm revolving is going to be x minus a fourth. So I take 2 pi times that distance times the height of the shell times the dx, which is like the little thickness of the shell, and I sum them all up. And when I do that, I get pi times this. Now, this will involve integration by parts. x log of x is equal to x squared over 2 log of x minus and this thing, and you get that. And you know the antiderivative for log of x also. You integrate that by parts to get it. All right, let's no do another example. Uh, solid form by revolving the region between y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x for x between 0 and pi fourths about the line x equal to minus uh, 4. So you have this region here uh, where x goes from 0 to pi fourths and it's revolved around a line that's way over to the left where x is equal to minus 4. That's why this looks the way it looks, kind of thin. All right, now in this example, you have cosine of x is bigger than the sine of x on this interval. And so from the above procedure, you would have the distance to the, um, the uh, axis, which would be x plus 4 times the height of the shell times the dx times 2 pi. And you integrate that from 0 to pi fourths. And after you go fuss, it, fuss with it using integration by parts, you end up with this for the answer. And, and yes, you'll need to do integration by parts. Now, let's find the volume of the ball of radius r using the method of shells. Well, in this case, the height of the shell is here. You take 2 pi x, where x is uh, x equal to 0 is the uh, axis about which you're revolving things. And so when you work this out, you get this and this and this, see? So same answer, just use a totally different approach. Now, this is the ellipse. Uh, it's revolved around the y-axis. So what I need to do, I find the height of the shell, which is right here. All right. You see, if you pick a value of x, then the y uh, value on the ellipse that lies above it is at this height. And you want twice that because you want to go from the one underneath it to the one above it. And so this gives you the height of the shell. Then you multiply by x, and I factored out some constants, find antiderivatives, plug in, and you get 4 thirds pi a squared b, which is the same thing as the above in the case where a and b are equal. Now in that case, you would be looking at a, uh, a uh, ball, see? Well, that involves, that's all I'm going to say about it. This is, these are the methods of shells and cross-sections for finding uh, volumes.